bar. It's where we have our barbecues every week. So you have to really watch out where you're walking because since it's hollow down here. From who? The fire department. Uh. They come in and check the smell. We have a good story together because there's no steps whatsoever. Right? I saw vragen aan the Steve of he geld heeft uit the house was. Yeah, and anders, want vanavond is er een feest daar. Als we moeten vanavond even week. Oh, where die Frank woont? Yeah, is a feest. Sixth Street. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
you doing? Good. You working on anything today, or? Um, I'm just working on some things in my space. You've been here a week now? Yeah. So you're gonna stay here and have the next room as your studio? Well, I'm, I'm not gonna stay in this room actually. Because it's too small, this floor. The stairs? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, but it's too bad. I hope they do get somebody. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> This is great. We should leave the steps like that. I love it. Would you pan down and get all of it all the way down? Yeah. And get the get me. We should go. We're going again. Oh, there they are again. Get a vertigo. Are you going to the roof? Yep. Oh, come over here and you can shoot at the roof going up there. Shooting? Yeah. Eventually, I want to have fun and celebrate. Sort of public space as well in the end, right? Right. And you need people that are, you know, not only need a place to stay, but people that are. The building obviously needs a lot of work. We should go back a little bit. How do you, some of you know each other, you know, and how do you decide, or, or like, how do you get moving on it? Right. Um, back in November, I found out that I had to leave my apartment, and I was going to school at the New York Academy at that time, and one of my classmates, Claire DeFranken, was looking for squats here in New York because she had been a squatter in Holland for six years. Um, <coughs> she got into the movement here, met people, I don't know how exactly, but mm -hmm. found them out somehow and found out about meetings. And so I started going to meetings with her. And Are these like meetings for, for like a group of squads in the neighborhood or just for less like individual squad, squads? Or? These meetings were um, people from different squads, what they were interested in doing and the reason behind the meetings was they wanted to have create what they were calling a squat cafe, mm -hmm. which would be like an organizational center for all the squats to tie them all together and, and improve communications. Um, they needed a building, a space to do that in. 
and for that reason they were looking for a new building to open up and because they were going to open up a new building they needed people to live in to mm -hmm. take care of the building and so we found this building and we opened it up for that purpose mm -hmm. There's a wide variety, obviously, in the squats. Um, some of them have very transient populations, mm -hmm. uh, people in and out all the time. Mm -hmm. Some of them, just when they began, opened up their doors to anyone and everyone who needed a place to live, mm -hmm. so they had problems with drugs, etc. Mm -hmm. One squat, for example, used to be called Serenity House. <laughs> <laughs> they, in, they've been together for, what, a year, three months or something they've been open and in that time they've had to literally kick out of the building 38 people mm -hmm. because of problems because they just accepted anyone mm -hmm. we've been trying not to get into that position mm -hmm. we're trying to take people in slowly also since you're starting out as, as, as like a building that's going to service the other squads if you all expect to be here for a long time right, right. Uh, this is just like get together on a Sunday and say, hey, we need steps, how much is it going to cost? And then everybody has to come up with the money. Is it more, I mean, is it really systematic? Like, no, it's is actually, it like a sort of general fund or, or do you fund, fund specific projects? Actually, some of both. But we do have a, a building fund. Instead of paying, you know, what other people call rent, we pay mm -hmm. an amount per month which for us at this time is $75 and may change in the future. It may go up, may go down, depends on what we need. Um, but everybody pays $75 a month. That, that amount goes into the treasury. I'm the treasurer, you know, so I keep track of it all. Um, I keep track of how much everybody individually puts in and also a, an account, a running account of how much available cash we have at the moment. Mm -hmm. into this building, mm -hmm. this, the hole that you see in the wall there, that was an actual hole all the way through the building. Well, that's Going the one out. that here to bricked up. Yeah. Uh -huh. She and I spent hours and hours and hours up here and was freezing at that time. Mm -hmm. right now, breaking up that and this because they broke. Initially, these kids used to come in. Yeah, that's what, that's what I thought. Uh -huh. Well, we barricaded it up. Uh -huh. But they broke through the barricade too, uh -huh. so we decided we had to brick it up. So we bricked up that and also this window because they could get in this window too. Which window? This one right there. Uh -huh. How do they get in from there? There's, there's the building right next to it. Oh. So somebody's somebody said something um, that a lot of the time you get into squabbles with dealers and, and people looking for places to shoot up. And I mean, and not just that, you know, like you have maybe have confrontations that, that people try to sabotage what you're doing because they, they, they need the space. Right. That hasn't happened here. No, yeah, no. Yeah. This place used to be a shooting gallery. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because, you know, that whole space that we're cleaning out on the first floor? Yeah. When we were initially were cleaning it out, there was hypos all over. Oh, yeah. I mean, the whole back was like a little, made into a little den. <laughs> Seriously, with couches and stuff. Is there any way to get sponsored or by organizations or to get around it? Right. Well, we're trying to become, in the future, we will become a non-profit organization. Uh, that, however, takes two years. You have to be in existence for two years before you can gain that status. So in the meantime, we are members of a group, an umbrella group called Allied Productions, which is an artist's umbrella organization It helps art groups get funding mm -hmm. for their projects. Um, our project, in terms of that, is the Artists' Work Hotel. Um, through Allied Productions, we can apply for grants, etc., and use that money then for that project. But because that, in project, that project involves other people living in the building, being invited and living here, we need water in the building, etc., mm -hmm. so those funds can go towards um, developing those parts of the buildings, water, etc. Mm -hmm. um, so, is there anything else that you uh, organize in terms of, well, like in terms of work? How do you? Okay, one day a week we decided we would have a community work day, which mean, technically means that everybody should be here on that day mm -hmm. to do big jobs, 
main jobs, um, communally speaking, that the building needs done. Mm -hmm. And so the plan for the work hotel is, uh, if I understand it right, when people are invited to stay here in a new space for like however long, um, but isn't there some policy that you guys wanted to in, uh, institute about like people contributing equipment or whatever, and it's sort of like as an exchange right. for well, using the space or? Obviously, the, um, Again, in a way, unfortunately, but because we're going to be providing the space for them, we can't do it absolutely free. Mm -hmm. We need some kind of, um, whether it be in the form of money, mm -hmm. or it'd be a small amount of money, but mm -hmm. or materials, or equipment, art equipment, etc., mm -hmm. that the building could use, um, that they could we donate. We need some sign of commitment or something from them. For right. Part. You right. Just they need like, to give something right. to us mm -hmm. in exchange for the space. We will also have in the building, you know, this is apart from the artist work hotel, mm -hmm. but there will be on each floor one room that's, or one space that's designated for community art workspace, mm -hmm. but with a specific use like one room will be a, a print room on one floor. Yeah, okay. On That's what I was getting at. Like whether you could have like sort of like a big art room somewhere in the building. Like right. I said, there's gonna be all different On another floor hopefully we will have a dark room. Mm -hmm. A photography dark room. On another floor we'll have something else, maybe a sculpture room or something. Mm -hmm. Where anybody from the building, whether it be an artist that's an invited artist living in the building for the while, mm -hmm. come to work in that space, or one of us that lives there permanently can use mm -hmm. the space as well. And one person on each floor, a permanent resident, will take care of that space and will be responsible for its upkeep and, and that it runs smoothly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tell you. Does it look good? I'm sorry. Blast it. And I should show what it was. And it made like a hole throughout the whole building. Every floor has the same hole, the same spot. Just to, to keep the rain out? Yeah. This is a temporary solution. Okay, you want to come over here, Annika? Alright, give me that. Oh, shit. 
We're gonna hang our rope down so we can swing around and climb up and slide down like Tarzan. because we want to get through the worst part of winter. everywhere you think these news teams go out and find it and invent it you know but it's just everywhere you go Always 
When the stairs were sledgehammered out, the risers were knocked out as well. That held this diagonal in like this. Now it's going out that way. So we need to squeeze it in with this two by four, it squeezes it in this way. We bolt a step in here, and bolting the step in will hold this metal piece in and will hold it stable all the way up. That way, the steps wall fit in the lighting. Right. We'll have to do it right there, too. Yeah. This is, this is right. Yeah, we'll do it twice here and up there. That's it. That's uh, the zones. What did you put blue shit in there? Yeah, yeah right? right? Magic steps. It's so cow shit. What blue shit did you put in there? So the other zak made from what else? Blue paint. Yeah, too much. What the hell? Why not? We'll just mix, mix, we'll mix blue paint in with the cement and make blue cement. No, you mix blue pigments with the cement and you'll get yellow. Yellow? Actually, I, I think we got some hard gear pigments in the closet if you want. No, to. really? Uh, <laughs> wake wake up! Wake enough. up, everybody! Dry, so we'll try one and see how it dries. You want to, you want to write something in there? Oh, on top of it? Yeah. Is there a good? Nah. Yeah. Let, let's yeah. Let, let's do like. Uh, I can't think of anything right now. Up. Down. <laughs> Stairway to heaven. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Come here. Yeah, so uh, any of these things? See, look over here. We have the little moldings that we're putting in all the other steps. Now we're zooming in on them. Look at that. See, they're made out of wire with a metal bar down in the middle. Yeah. Can we have it in English, please? Oh, English? <laughs> well, the plastic is a little bit worse. No, it's Um, skeleton. 
a bird skeleton. It has a few feathers still on it. Maybe oh, we should wow. put that over there. Yeah, that's a good idea. I have to get it now. Ali, I put, you probably step on it and then it and then it's just break. Mm -hmm. You think so? Maybe, but maybe it sucks through. Or maybe on the side where you don't step on it or something. What about this? This is really toxic, by the way. Oh, nice for your hands, mate. Oh, this is great. Oh, yeah. This is, this is really psychedelic looking. Wow, oh, I'm tripping. Oh, that's beautiful. That's nice. Do you want milk in your coffee? Sure. Standing right on it. Zal ik even overnemen? Oh. Als we het maar gewoon dweilen of zo. Ja, laat het maar gewoon drogen, dan kunnen we het opvegen. Ja, ik heb toch niet die deze frames dus hier komt. Als ze zo niet komt, dan beside us to fill the night with the song we'll hear the sound of violins out yonder where the blue begins the moon will guide us as we go drifting along can't we still over the rim of the hill can't we sail away on a little dream and settle high on the crest of a thrill let's build a stairway to the stars a lovely lovely stairway to the stars it would be heaven to climb to heaven with you Lovely, lovely stairway to the stars 
it would be heaven to climb to heaven with you. Sides and, and here. On the budget, both items too. Tell you to let them know that you're fed up with these past the buck tactics. Tell them by phone, letter, or telegram that a few more state dollars will go a long way in your community to meet these dangers. Do it. Don't let the governor dump his problems on your front step. This message is sponsored by the Civil Service Employees Association, Local 1000, AFSCME, AFL-CIO, Joe the President. When you're ready to sell your home, We know about everything and they knew everything was and they went through the whole building. And they knew because here. they'd been watching you for a while. Yeah, well they knew what they saw when we moved in and then... Well, when... who is it that watched? Is it the street cops? I mean, just the guys patrolling the corners here? Yeah, the sergeant on the block. They pay attention to that? Well, they didn't pay much attention until we had a truck and all these presses on it. Uh -huh. We were moving incredible amounts of stuff in. Uh -huh. I think they got a call because somebody suggested, thought that we were stealing them or something. I see. And so they all showed up at that point and came inside and we didn't, you know, trying to figure out what to do with us, mm -hmm. right? Because they knew something was up. But then uh, we just showed them papers saying we've been there for a month, and this the the B couple in the corner said, "Well, then that's not our business," and went away, right? Mm -hmm. the new press. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm going to steal it back. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, man. Even fits. I know, it's got a head as big as I do. It's no. 
I was not <laughs> actually arrested. Okay. Um, the three of us were out the building, and at that point, we thought we were all out. So we didn't know there was somebody else in the building at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, poor O'Carl was upstairs working, and he heard all this noise and thought it was just people working on the stairs. Mm -hmm. So we're all out the building, and they pull somebody at the door so we can't come back in, and they start coming in and looking around, the police and mm -hmm. HPD. And then they get up to uh, the third floor, and they hear Carl upstairs, and she says, is somebody up there? And he says, yeah. And he says, uh, come on down. And he says, why? Is it a party? And she says, well, no. He comes downstairs and says, oh, wow, I guess it's not a party, you know. And they're telling, <laughs> <laughs> and they're telling him to leave. So he gets some things together and comes downstairs. And then he sees us all outside, and we're like, no, you know, try not to leave. And so he goes back into the building and hides out for a while, and they come and find him, and they arrest him. The first floor, they went in and uh, went through the whole building, broke every, every apartment lock, mm -hmm. and went through everybody's stuff. So everybody's rooms were, had all their clothes scattered all over the floor, and their stuff turned over, and your bags emptied out, mm -hmm. and things like that. For what reason would they do that, or just to hassle you? Yeah, well, they, they could have said they were looking for drugs, they could have said uh, that they were looking for firearms or... Do they have the right have to, to search for drugs yeah. in that way yeah. without finding anything no, in the first no instance? They, they were in the building illegally to begin with. A lot of time outside where they won't let us in the building and they're all in the building. So they police and HPD and they go through the whole house and we don't know what's going on. And uh, we keep saying to them, look, we, inside we have papers to prove that we've been there for more than 30 days. So the that you need to have some kind of eviction papers to get us out. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't let us in to get them. And uh, we're really lucky, basically, because at some point, uh, see, this whole time, people were showing up, and there was like 50, 60 people outside with banners and screaming mm -hmm. and yelling, and there was a lot of press people there and cameras, and everybody asking questions. This housing advocacy group showed up and said, yeah, okay, we know this is illegal, we're witnessing this, and told the police that. Mm -hmm. uh, we had people on the phone to a few different lawyers, mm -hmm. and we had one guy showing up saying that he's a paralegal for our lawyer. The whole time, they're in the building and we're not, and they won't let us in to get our papers. And so then, HPD shows up in a van with our papers, mm -hmm. which really blew me away. So it's like, wait a minute, those are the papers for hours from inside, mm -hmm. all our mail and stuff that shows we've been there for long. And they had it there all. We were on 3rd Street, and the, H the same HPD workers that came and to do the bricking last week was talking to us and they were telling us that they've got papers for this building, they some kind of eviction papers and they're going to come next week to try and evict us. Last, last time that they came that we got off because what they were doing was very legal, they didn't have any kind of eviction papers at all. So they say now that they've got some kind of papers and they're going to come and try and throw us out. So at this point, we're madly trying to barricade the building and get people in and letting people know that we might be expecting another eviction. Um, apparently, there's a developer that wants to buy the building, and which makes some sense because they're accepting requests for proposals from developers on the 50-50 plan. And right now, the battery is running out of For twenty-five dollars, he installed this whole thing. Yeah. I wanna see? Initially, we had all the electricity for coming right out of the cell. It's pretty nice. Looks beautiful. So, how much did the the equipment here cost you? About two hundred and fifty dollars. Up, it's forward. Two clicks. Where's the fucking switch? Oh, there. Two clicks down is reverse, okay? So if I ask you to reverse it, I'll put it two clicks down. How's it going? Okay, I put it in reverse.
battery. Four. They gotta be ready now with the buckets. I don't see the. Another bucket? Yeah. And I'm talking about like 50 buckets, you know.
doesn't work on Sunday. What then? The neighborhood. You know, if the neighborhood has some complaints, they can start cleaning our dealer. And we clean yeah. rubble in the meantime. Well, that doesn't really have anything to do with it. I think so. This is positive energy. Don't give me a collection of big birds. Oh. <laughs> Mom's going to do the roof. Uh -huh. All the things we get out of there, we throw it on the roof. It's in our building. Uh -huh. So in the end, this building is filled with refrigerators. Is the roof stuff. a good place to put that shit? So when did you start filling this here up? Uh, today. Today? You today. put all this stuff here today? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. With two people, three people. Oh, God. It's uh, one, two, three stoves. Um, about six refrigerators, and then a, a bunch of totally uh, fucked up mattresses, los matres, just a little bit in Spanish. Great! <laughs>
telling us about how we originally got into the building. This is the entrance. There it is. Over dead bodies and broken syringes, they climbed. In the dark, the rubble was six feet high, and I just shot my shadow there, but the rubble was six feet high, and they climbed over through all this, like, mud and disgusting shit. Out the top of what is now that door, where Steve ripped a couple of pairs of pants. And, well, they have now knocked the wall out, and we have this fabulous new, like, performance space, or whatever you want to use it for. Doors of perception. I think I'll the door. head of the fit. It sure does. It's just barely. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Nice. Muscle of muscle. The motivating force for all was the three quarter inch pilot in the front hall. The, the front hall? Like just by the bottom of the stairs. Oh, I see. So, how did you find out these people were moving? Well, Siobhan and Chuck and Carlos were there. <laughs> Okay. Stop where you are.
this is more evidence that squatters are violent people. <laughs> what Ross is doing is um, getting people in different countries to organize benefits on this moment to help us out, paying lawyers and paying, um, you know, money that we need to, to get together to get our shit together on the legal side. What's this? Uh, what's the difference between the squatting situation in like Amsterdam, where you're from, and here? Mm. Squatting has <coughs> been going on there for a long, long time. It's not like here in the Low East Side. This is something of the last five years. Squatting has been an issue for at least 20 years you know, in this continent. <coughs> and what it means is that people have been going through these kind of wars that are going on right here and now a long time before mm -hmm. like in the 60s and 70s stuff happened there and we had victories and we had losses and basically the whole general line of the movement there is it's going down there the system created so many new ways to deal with demonstrations to deal with any activities from the squad movement to deal with squatting in general. They have new laws to evict people very easily. It's very difficult there to squat because the, the laws, the system is much more organized, much more together. I think that for me, it is basically on the legal side, it was easy for me. It's starting to get difficult now because this is the first time people have to think really about how to get the shit together on a legal level. But in Holland, it's very uh, organized, also in Berlin, in all big, major cities in Europe. Didn't you say something about there's a sort of, I don't know, like compromise, almost legalized squatting kind of thing in Berlin? What's the... What they did was, um, they started this around seven, eight years ago, that the, the mayors of the big cities came together and they said, well, how are we going to deal with the squatters? There are so many squats, um, we have to do something about it. So they said, well, the only way to deal with it basically is to split up the squatters movement inside. And the way to do that is by um, legalizing like three or four major big squats and giving living possibilities to a lot of squatters, but to only a few houses and let them reconstruct their own building and put some money into that process so these people are working on it, putting a lot of energy into it and they're shutting up and the rest of the squatters we just evict them. We just have an international network mm -hmm. so people know you know over the planet what's going on and squatting and we have to exchange in order to be strong if we unite now on a, on a whole international level then we can have really some power and influence in the whole system laws for that housing is a right. I mean, that's what it's all about. Learn homeless people to open up buildings by showing them material and teaching them how to be responsible and, and dealing with the whole organizational level of it and the constructional work and financial level, all these things. Then we can grow instead of being broken down by the system is happening. The thing is, especially here in Lower East Side, our squatters um, are basically focused on building up the house to a point that you can live in it. It's not really built up to the point where you can live and work in it. Mm -hmm. And one of the goals of our house is to be able to provide spaces for separate um, individuals to develop their way of living by creating their own jobs, mm -hmm. which is, for example, the, the print shop. People could learn how to print and maybe start their own little business in their mm -hmm. alter alternative level. Or the dark room. Or the dark room, or the, 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 the skull shop, shop mm -hmm. or the, whatever is going to happen. Or you, whatever classes you're going to teach. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Or whatever music is going to be recorded here, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And um, I think that's a very important thing because if you if you want to keep your house healthy, you have to keep working together. You have to have a goal where you're all working on. If, if you only work up your building for a living, then you end up living and maybe alienating from each other. If you have projects that uh, unite in, in, in doing stuff together, then it's, I think it's very healthy for, for the atmosphere inside the building. And, uh, 
that's one of our goals. And we hope to be an example for other buildings to, to do. Now there's the constitution. <laughs> there, it uh, there it is, a fabulous parchment document. We put this constitution up in the first two weeks we started living here. And it's very different than the other buildings. I start doing this shit when um, stuff starts happening uh, that, you know, that they can't deal with. And then they find out, hey, we should have written down things and get some straight lines in there, some goals. And that's what we did in the beginning to prevent having to deal with stuff internally in the house. And then we hope that from this point on new projects in New York and all over the world could develop. Annika Hellstrom Boyle, <laughs> camera woman. All right. My co-camera person there, making a big, a big grin. She loves being in the building and working hard, hard all day. <laughs> Look at all the rubble she dragged around, and. <laughs> Are we Baroque or what? <laughs> we are. Tea? Yeah, okay, do it. To be continued. Siobhan? Yeah. Do you have one of those chisels? An ongoing adventure. <laughs> Let's finish uh, that out. <laughs> the excess house. Are the ones I brought still here? 
What ones did you know? Did I give you one before? No. 